what I'd like to cap uh, to talk about right now is capturing of age. So <coughs> when we think about yes. Oh, thank you, thank you. Appreciate that. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Um. So uh, I'd like to uh, talk about about a very common need associated with maintaining people's age in the mall, the age of aging in the mall. You might think at first blush of age just like any other aspect of state. People's infection status changes, their you know, status with respect to various chronic disease change, perhaps their mar marital status changes, perhaps their income. And you might think age is just yet another aspect of change in the state. From a certain level of abstraction, that's, that can be true. But it's, it's special in that it changes in a very structured, regular way. Absent tongue dilation effects associated with near speed of light travel or something like that. People of ages across the mall um, uh, age in a very consistent way. And so there's a frequent need of keeping track of individuals' ages. Within within model, you may have effects that that are age specific, that vary with age. Um, you may have uh, you may have situations where you simply want to capture a demographic snapshot of the population um, subject to some risks over time. And if those risks are are uniform. Those at higher ages will have been around longer and had a, had more kicks at the can. So. Um, so we frequently do need to match uh, to, to, to uh, secure access to information on a person's age. Um, and the situation is is more textured, all the more textured, because we often wish to take advantage of the fact that age with an agent-based model can be continuous. It needn't be broken into crude age categories, say five-year age categories, 10-year age categories. Instead, it can be retained as, as detailed a level as you see fit. And the question is, at a practical level, given that it's changing, and yet we want it to be, to be um, around at a very detailed level, how do we capture that effectively? Do we have an event which updates a person's age periodically? Um, do we use a state chart which subdivides them into small age categories? which again seems to put us back into a discrete age category situation. What do, what do we do, given that we might want to slice and dice it as finely as we want at times or in different ways? Well, I'll tell you one thing that we do in our group, and I, I think it's a pretty viable strategy. Um, and, and it's indicated here, if you open this ABM model with birth death that I think we had opened this morning in the first place, there's, there's a cluster of little variables here. Um, and variables and functions, which um, uh, sit along so, alongside this, um, these characteristics here. So there's a thing called appearance time. There's a thing called initial age and current age. Now, current age here is actually a function. And by Java convention, it should be lower, lower C um, uh, to start with. And um, there's a, a, a variable called appearance time. And and then a parameter called initial age, okay? Um, now, when a baby is born within the model, we have performed birth here, and we bring a baby into the world, um, we add population, and, and, and the initial age is, is zero. However, in the initial population, if we go up and look at the initial population, um, the initial age is actually drawn from a distribution. And, and I, de I delegate it to a, a static method in person called random age. Okay. Um, so now let's go look at, at person again. So initial age, zero for all those people born in the model, non-zero, generally non-zero for those in part of the initial population. And you notice there's an appearance time. This is the time at which they first appeared in the model. You notice its initial value is given by time. This call to time simply computes the current time in the model. Okay. So, so this is the time at which they came into existence. Now, they may come into existence through being born, or they may come into existence as part of the initial 
initial population. Um, but this records the time at which that, that was. And taking those, with those two pieces of information put together, the current age can be computed as their initial age plus the current time minus the appearance time. Okay? So this obviates the need, this sidesteps the need to keep an age variable that gets updated on an ongoing basis with, with all the load that that imposes when integrated over the entire population. Imagine having each person having an event firing, say, every week that updates their age or something like that, and then going on across the entire population. 52 times a year across a population of probably 50,000 or something like that. It's actually a fair bit of effort involved. In this case, we just have this function. Anytime we want to know someone's age, we can simply call it. Now, if we further want to maintain information about their age, their presence in different age categories, we can have a state chart which does that with fixed time transitions between different ages, um, although we have to distribute them within that state chart um, uh, for when they come in, for those who start in fall. But this is a very, um, this is quite elegant, quite economical, uh, computationally frugal way to, uh, to calculate their current age. And it'll calculate as finely as you want it. Um, so uh, you know they're they're going to be their age is going to be increasing as given by this function. Their age will be increasing in a continuous sort of fashion, without the need to explicitly wake them up periodically to you know time to increase your age. Okay. So so this strategy we found works pretty well, pretty well. So just wanted to show you that it's certainly not the only one around, but uh, 